Merry Christmas, everyone. This is the beginning of the end of the Christmas season. It's now the new year, and we're in the end of what's called Christmas Tide, T I D E. And Christmas Tide is those 12 days of Christmas coming from the 25th of December through the 5th of January when we mark the event called Epiphany, which is when the wise men arrive at Bethlehem. Uh, I just learned recently that uh, in the early church, Epiphany was celebrated before the Christmas uh, uh, 25th celebration was held. So uh, Epiphany really comes before Christmas uh, in the uh, ancient history of our church. But uh, today I'm going to take us down a path of uh, Christmas carols that maybe is a little less traveled. And so you're going to hear some things that uh, you perhaps have not heard before by arrangers who have done some beautiful things with our Christmas carols that we love so much. Hymn number 184 in the United Methodist Hymnal is Of the Father's Love Begotten. It doesn't even appear as an Advent piece, and some of the verses that celebrate the birth of Jesus are left out of our, of our hymnal. But this song goes way back. This is the oldest uh, hymn in our hymnal. It was written uh, around the fourth century. It was really a chant. It was uh, kind of a wandering vocal line that was sung um, unaccompanied and without uh, harmony and is called the Divine Mystery. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful piece of music that celebrates actually the birth of Jesus and, and uses the John 3.16 text, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Of the Father's love begotten, it begins, ere the world began to be, he is Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending he. You know you've written some good words when uh, nearly 200 tunes have been written to your poetry. And so next is uh, Away in a Manger. Now this isn't the tune that's the usual one. This one is written by William Kirkpatrick back in the 1800s. It's an arrangement by John Carter. I'll talk a little bit about John Carter later, but uh, many of the pieces I'm playing this morning or this afternoon, whenever you hear it, are uh, 
by John Carter, Away in a Manger. One of my favorite Christmas hymns is uh, Lo How a Rose Air Blooming. I think we hear it every season, every Christmas season, and uh, it's just one of those gorgeous introspective tunes that speaks to me. It was written long ago, and uh, it was uh, harmonized about 10 years after the melody was written, which is, uh, and, and been pretty much left untouched since. So it's a real tribute to Michael Pretorius, who, who wrote the piece. It uh, refers to the rose, and there are many references in the Old Testament to the rose. The uh, one that I'm going to quote is from the 35th chapter of Isaiah, which reads, the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like a rose. Hymn 244 in the Methodist hymnal is uh, Twas in the Moon of Wintertime. It's kind of a haunting piece that um, translates the story of the birth of Jesus for the Native Americans who 
uh, were living in what is now Canada. And back in 1643, a Jesuit missionary came to the uh, wilds of the uh, north of Michigan here in, in uh, southern Canada and uh, brought the word to the Wyandotte Nation, the Huron tribe. And he took a French folk song and he translated it uh, with words that would make sense to these Native Americans. And so the story of the birth of Jesus is uh, told using Gitche Gitche Manitou rather, for a great God. And the baby was born within the lodge of broken bark. And the chiefs from far and near came and knelt with gifts of fox and beaver pelt. It was in the moon of winter time. The next song I'm going to play for you is one I had never heard of. It's a confession I have to make. It's called Carol of the Birds, and I haven't ta met anybody who has known this piece. Um, but when I looked it up, it, it's a tremendously interesting story. And it is a song based on a tune from the... Uh, area of Spain called Catalonia. The great Pablo Casals, cellist, at 94 played this piece. And he claimed that this was the most beautiful tune that had ever been written. And that's saying quite a bit from a master of, of the cello. It was a, a, a tune that was a tribute to his native Catalonia in Spain. And the lyrics of the poem uh, are uh, saturated with all kinds of birds. It, it's kind of interesting, and twas in the moon of wintertime, the words something about all the birds have fled. But in this one, the birds come uh, to the baby Jesus, and, uh, and then they go out and they tell that story. And so the lyrics include the eagle, the sparrow, the finch, the robin, the lark, and on and on. And uh, I hope that you enjoy the carol of the birds.
The Burgundian Carol is next. I love to say that word Burgundian. It comes from Burgundy in the eastern region of France and was written in the 16th century. And uh, this tune really got uh, its popularity in the uh, 50s and 60s. Pete Seeger uh, performed it. Joan Baez uh, played by the Mormon Tabernacle uh, Choir, uh, sung by the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and uh, was uh, a um, just a lovely, lovely piece. I love the left hand in this. I'll play a little bit of... That's just a cool thing. <laughs> anyway, the um, lyrics, again, refer back to uh, animals uh, that come to, the, uh, come to the manger. The winter season of the year when to this world our Lord was born, the ox and donkey, so they say, did keep the holy presence warm. If we, like oxen and donkeys then, in spite of all the things we've heard, would be like oxen and donkeys then, we'd hear the truth, believe his word. The next piece is Mary's Little Boy Child. It's a piece that was written in the early 1950s, the words and the music by uh, Jester Hairston. You, some of you of a certain vintage may remember a TV show called Amen. And Jester Hairston was uh, the uh, lead guy on that show. But uh, he also wrote the uh, spiritual Amen, which you're probably familiar with. Harry Belafonte and Andy Williams and the Mormon Tabernacle Choir popularized this, uh, this tune some years back. And it's always been a favorite of mine. Uh, the uh, long time ago in Bethlehem, though the Holy Bible says, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Hark now hear the angels sing, newborn king today. 
And man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. I heard the bells on Christmas Day is uh, is a favorite of mine. I <clears throat> have uh, played it frequently through the years, and uh, the this background to this story is is interesting. The uh, poem is written by Longfellow back in the 19th century. He wrote it around Christmas of 1863. The country was in the middle of a horrid civil war that was breaking the nation apart. He had lost his wife two years earlier in a house fire and uh, his son went off to war against his father's wishes and later was badly wounded. And so he was in a pretty low spot. But at Christmas he heard the bells and it brought him back to the truth of Christmas and what it's all about. It, it, the poem goes a bit like this. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men.
Appalachian Christmas Carol is a, uh, an arrangement by uh, a fellow by the name of uh, John Ness Beck. And uh, he has a connection to Royal Oak First that uh, many of you may not be aware of. He was the very first composer who uh, came to uh, our church and did a composer festival back when Chris Hall was here back in the 80s. And um, John Ness Beck wrote a tremendous amount of uh, wonderful choral music and uh, arrangements for piano and voice. And so uh, it's... Uh, uh, was fun to look at what he had done with some of his Christmas carols. The Appalachian Christmas Carol, when I looked at it uh, without playing it, I wasn't sure what the tune was, and so um, uh, after playing it, I realized it's that uh, embedded in there is the uh, song, I Wonder As I Wander, and that has an interesting story to it that I thought would be worth sharing with you. There's a guy back in the 1930s by the name of John Jacob Niles, and he traveled all over the South uh, recording and listening and writing down and uh, doing everything he could to capture the folk music of Appalachia before it probably would eventually disappear. And in a little North Carolina town, he sees this little girl standing on the running board of this car, well, when cars had running boards, and uh, she was singing some snatches of a tune that just uh, really captured his heart. So he, uh, the, the little girl, his father was in the, in the church where the car was parked and uh, he was preaching and apparently they were going to get tossed out of town. He was on his last uh, dime and so the uh, little girl told him that and he uh, said, well, please sing this song. I love this song you're singing. So he, she kept singing little bits of it and every time she, she'd sing a little bit, he'd give her a quarter which would get her, a, which would get her dad a gallon of gas. So. Uh, finally, he heard enough of it that he was able to compose uh, this uh, song, and it turns out to be uh, a piece called I Wonder As I Wander, and it's really one of my uh, favorite uh, pieces of the Christmas season. The song has a feeling of being unfinished, and, and it, it, uh, it, it uh, is a tune that uh, is sort of haunting, the lyrics begin, I wonder as I wander out under the sky how Jesus the Savior did come for to die for poor ornery people like you and like I. I wonder as I wander out under the sky. There's a little footnote about the word ornery, O-N apostrophe R-Y. Uh, some th think it meant ornery. <laughs> some said ordinary. But in either case, maybe it's both. Anyway, Appalachian Christmas Carol.
So this brings us to the uh, end of this little program. I hope you've enjoyed uh, hearing uh, some perhaps a little different carols than you are used to hearing and uh, some of the little stories that I found to be interesting. We're going to wrap up today with uh, a piece that you know very well. In fact, I'm not even going to say the name. You don't need to. uh, You won't have to guess. You'll know. Thank you.